Welcome back to the jump. Presented by Doers. Wade to the rack. Deter, no foul, and here comes Minnesota. The Bulls have the foul now, and they do. I think they actually just threw Dwayne Wade. Did he just get injected? I think he did, and he knew it too. You are right, Doris. He knew it immediately. And he goes straight to the locker room. He knew it, whatever it was that transpired a moment ago. With Ben Taylor, one of the youngest officials in the league at 31 years of age. Wade knew he was going to be done. <laughs> oh, that's What funny. do you think? Was it justified on D. Wade's Listen, part? Man, it all fell apart for them. I was, <laughs> losing to them? Right. <laughs> I would have got thrown out at the end, too. <laughs> Sour. I mean, look, they gave up a 21 point lead. He right? got his money's worth. If he takes a walk like that, he knows he got his money's worth. He knows, right? And you know what the official, too, they pointed out in the broadcast, one of the youngest guys in the league trying to set the precedent to other guys around the league. You cannot do that in my face and curse me out the way that Dwayne just did. So that is a little bit about what's going on there, too. But let's talk about the team on the other side, Timber Pups. The Young Wolves, 21-point comeback on the Bulls last night. That is the largest comeback of the season thus far of anyone, anywhere. So props to them. Zach Levine, 24 points in 43 minutes. And the whole team, right, just looked like they really wanted to win for Tibbs. And Tracy, you talked to Carl Anthony Towns about it after the game. Carl, it's T-Mac. Great win, big fella. Hey. <laughs> tell tell, tell that, me man. the importance of getting this win for Tibbs being back in Chicago. I mean, it was real important. Uh, to me personally, it was. You know, I didn't shoot the ball well tonight, and, you know, I just felt every time I missed a shot, you know, that uh, I was letting tips down, you know. But I just tried to pick it up on the other end. You know, when you're not hitting shots, there's a lot more ways to be just as effective. And I just tried to bring a lot of energy all around. I told Tibbs in the fourth quarter, you know, uh, I'm going to bring this home for you. So we, I'm just glad that I was able to come true on my work. Sweet, right? I mean, yeah. they clearly meant something to him. Well, first of all, I love how his face lit up. And said, T -Mac. <laughs> we never get reactions like that. I know, we, we, never, <laughs> we never do. It's just like, oh, Rachel, hey, hey. But um, they, they, that was a great question because we had that talking on the show yesterday right. that this hadn't quite gelled between the coach and these young players, but last night you saw it. And uh, we talked about what the, what Tibbs brought to the Bulls when he was coaching that team, right? Their identity, they were a tough, green team. Um, this is what I expected to see out of Minnesota when Tibbs was, you know, named the head coach with this young group of uh, talent. Uh, you have three guys on this team averaging over 20 points. And I expected to see the grit and the tenacity out of these guys because that's what Tibbs bring. They showed that last night. Now, will this be a catapult to something, you know, greater for them? We have to find out. Well, if your theory is right and Towns sound after the game backs it up that they really were playing for tips it's a great sign because i think this has been a really tough first 25 games for both sides these are young kids we know young does not win in this league these guys have never been coached as hard right. as tibbs is going to coach these guys but then for thibodeau it's an adjustment too because in, in chicago he had vets mm -hmm. he and this is a, a team full of kids who are going to take yeah, time to learn his way so talk to them they look they looked connected last night, yes. and that's a great sign. Yes. Right, so we could see this could be the beginning of something. Sometimes you need to get a little angry to make it all work. Who knows? There were actually a lot of good games last night, not just that one. Nick's sons went into overtime, but I got to tell you, the moment that got all the attention. I love it. This does stuff. I love this it. This does Porzingis, Marquise Chris. And look, Porzingis gets pushed down and then retaliated I by Conan shoving the sons rookie. This angle is amazing, by the way, right? Boom! They both yeah, young got fella. teed up. After the game, Melo had some words of praise. I wasn't surprised. He, he, he needed it. He needed to, you know, get that. Sometimes if people try to take advantage of his, of his kindness. I've never seen him get that angry. So for him to kind of get to that point, you know, obviously something was going on. I love okay. it. Right? Yeah. I mean, this, this guy has game. 7-3, he has game. And uh, the young fella tried it. So I wanted to see him retaliate. They're going to push him around and test him. Look, you're a man first. Don't let nobody punk you out on the basketball court. <laughs> this is a good you, tech like, take, right? This is a good sure. you, you can I'm not mad at him time. for this. Well, don't, don't let nobody push you around. Get up and retaliate. The only thing I don't like is that it kind of has that 
he's European, so he's soft and he's got to prove himself undertones. And, and that just I don't like only because this guy, since the minute he got to New York, has done everything right. This is basketball. Yeah. He's handled. I was going to say, I don't it's think it's a European Mark. thing. I no. think he's a young guy in the league and he's got to prove himself. Look, listen. I'm not so sure. That's a sign of respect right there. That's what that is. I respect you, but I'm, I'm going to test you and see, you know, right. what type of man you are. Right. Well, I mean, look, this wasn't the first time, right, that we've seen the Suns and the Knicks dust up. We've got some good old video oh, here. Oh, Doc Rivers. You know we're going to rip this out if we get an excuse to Doc Rivers and KJ. Look, KJ, you can't be running now. You That's can't a be different back league. That is bench. a different league. You, you just see the... the the, the speed at which those guys were confronting and each other. This would, this would not happen. Charles this would not, happen, would not today. happen today. But it's fun to show. Come on. And, and today, look, listen, if, last night. Oh, I, man. Our, our fans will love that today. <laughs> Tracy's all wistful. He gets his cup off. <laughs> they will like love that. To Ratings will be sky high. They'll be tuned in just <laughs> to see a fight. <laughs> You'd come you back if, they did, if that was how it was. <laughs> I love it. Then he would come back. We have to take a quick break. We got a lot more to come. But first, here's our distant replay. This date in 2004. We have a surprise for you, Jason. Check it out. Feeds Richardson. Robinson gets it off in left it short. Richardson. Oh. Oh, Sean Bradley, man. Oh, yeah, you didn't goodness. say that when you did it. Oh. <laughs> I was there when Tracy did it to him. I was there for that one. This happened a lot in the early 2000s. That, that actually was the same year, I think. <laughs> No. Let's keep talking doers. Guys, Draymond Green, he warned everyone. Seriously, last month, he explicitly came out in the media and warned other teams, do not try to win a game with a play drawn up against me, which from other players might sound like trash talk or senseless bravado, but it ain't trash when it's the truth, baby. Take a look at what happened last night when Anthony Davis, one of the most gifted players in the NBA, tried to go at Draymond to tie the game in the final seconds. I mean, that's straight up robbery, right? And, and it's hardly the first time. We are only seven weeks into the NBA season, and he has been killing teams at the end of games, night after night. Remember this against the Hawks for Dennis Schroeder? And then former Warrior Ken Bazemore, he got the same treatment on the next trip down the court. Or against the Bucks again. Checking one of the league's best young stars, Giannis Antetokounmpo, nope, sorry. Draymond will just be taking that ball away now. Thank you very much. This is why Draymond is the front runner for Defensive Player of the Year. It, it's not just his defense, it's his defense in the clutch and that he can do it guarding one through five. Draymond even got the seal of approval from the glove this week. Gary Payton told Comcast Sportsnet, Dray reminds him of fellow Hall of Famer Dennis Rodman. Now, Payton did have one recommendation for Draymond. He said that he wants Dre to work on the officials and the way he talks to them to get them on his side. Now. That's ironic, considering it was just Monday that Draymond told our Chris Haynes that he has actually been holding back all this time. Yeah, here's the quote. Trust me, trust me, he said. There's a lot I hold back. I know some of the stuff I would say, the things that it would bring and it would probably be a distraction, so I stay away from it. I definitely hold back quite a bit. Now, first, I would like it to make it clear I would pay-per-view the heck out of a video diary of the basketball talk that Draymond is currently holding back. Again, just the basketball talk. But please, some network out there, make it happen. Second, I love how Draymond speaks his mind. It's one of my favorite things about him. So I'm not sure I agree with Gary Payton that his problem is how he talks to people, especially the officials. I think the problem is he still crosses the line sometimes in how he plays, the leg kicks and all that. But honestly, the whole Draymond Green package is so good, I'd take it every time. I mean, I mean Tracy, do you think that Draymond should hold back a little bit more, especially with the refs, or that would change the fire in his game? No, I, I like the fact that he's showing maturity and holding back because he still can be productive. As you've seen in those video clips, he still can be a lockdown defender when need be, still be a value to his team. We don't want that Draymond that caused his team um, the finals, the championship last year in those finals. We don't want that guy. He still can be very effective, you know, holding back as on his emotions and going at the referees. Every time this comes up, the question on the flip side is, what are the Warriors supposed to do? The fire that this guy plays with is it's what he is. How do you tell someone don't be who you are? Now, the kicking thing, if the league is going to make it a focus, a 
he's going to have to find a way to deal with that, even though he says, hey, none of you guys took kinesiology in college. He's probably right. <laughs> but he's going to have to address that. But you, well, you're never going to turn the fire no, off. That, you don't want to turn the fire off. No, you don't want to turn the fire off. But with the other antics, the kicking and, and things of that nature, he can't be that guy. I mean, because the league has a, has a, a real radar on him for uh, being that type of person. And he feels persecuted for it, but he actually hasn't even gotten hit for it every time he's done it. He did it to Marquise Chris of the Suns. I don't know if we have the video of that, but I I don't even think he got called on this. There wasn't, right? And it dislocated (laughs) his finger. (laughs) (laughs) That's so blatant right right there. And a couple days later, one of the beat writers tweeted out a photo of the finger, and it was like all swollen and gross and disgusting and dislocated and everything. So to that, I think we all agree. He's got to tamp that down. He said that's involuntary. Yeah. Did that look involuntary? I'm just saying. But you are around these guys all the time. He says he is holding back. I don't know if I buy it. Yeah, I'm not so sure either because I I did want that video channel, though. I think. Again, just the basketball talk. Early in the season, I felt like he was getting texts just for screaming after a great play. And I thought, you know what, the refs are maybe keeping too close on eyeing him. But again, he's, I don't know how you tell him to to shut that off. And and he would play worse. I mean, I think you saw after the suspension, he he was a shell of himself in the game after the suspension. I mean, a key defensive stop on Anthony Davis. Key defensive stop. He got the steal and he showed his emotions. Be that guy. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing not working for the Warriors right now. That road trip they've been on should have sapped the energy out of them. But except for that one show in Memphis, it didn't, right? I mean, I would say this, though. They, I, they, they were tired. I mean, it was grueling because they traveled so much, almost 6,000 miles on that trip. And I was actually in New Orleans, not for the game. I had a chance to visit with Clay Thompson. We did a podcast the night before the New Orleans game. And he, he, was, he admitted, man, this has been a long trip. And so I think... They're human. I mean, they're great. They're an offensive machine, but they've lost some of the depth they've had. They're they're gonna they're gonna be weary on long trips, just like anybody. Else. And they're not taking nights off. They're not. Ta- <laughs> we'll get to that. We can uh, wait. No, I'm we just will get to that. You know, Shows have a rundown. We'll get. Yeah. My the fault. show really does never run down. But anyway, here's something else that many people noticed from this same game last night. In the third quarter, including me, by the way, Steph hits a three, putting the Warriors up seven, and then gives a little dap to the Pelicans' assistant coach, Darren Ehrman. Now, we'll uh, spot shot of this. There you go. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right there. Now, Steph knows Ehrman well. He used to be an assistant coach with the Warriors for three years. And after the game, Steph did explain... While I'm shooting, he's yelling out, if he makes it, it's a good shot. If he makes it, it's a good shot. I'm trying to encourage their defense. So I wanted to you know a little praise for that good shot I made. I mean, I know why Steph wanted to do it. Are you cool with the guy on the Pelicans bench, the assistant coach doing it? Nah. Not, not, as okay, a, not right? if I'm a player on the team. Not when this guy's dropping 30 on us. And we're losing. I'm not cool with that. I'm going to defend Darren Ehrman here and say that he didn't know how to react. He was caught up in the moment. Look, assistant coaches get starstruck too. Steph, if Steph Curry sticks his hand out he to was slap with- it, if Steph Curry sticks his hand out to slap it, most mortals are going to go yes. yes. But this is not an assistant coach. This is not an assistant coach that you know hasn't been around Steph every day for a season. I mean, he was with the Warriors for years, so he shouldn't. Yeah, he shouldn't be starstruck. He knows Steph. He shouldn't be, but I'm going to say in this instance, he didn't even realize what he was doing. If I'm after the day, how do you not realize that he's on the other team? They're wearing different colors. I got it's some very words for him when I, I go to the locker room. Somebody told me that. That's the thing. If you're on, if you were Seriously. on the Pelicans, right? It, yeah, he has to see me. Like, <laughs> you can't be doing that, bro. <laughs> right, we have to move on to the topic that keeps giving in the All NBA. Right. I and learned Tracy, my lesson. Yeah, first of all, don't mess with Tracy. You should know that. But, Tracy, here you go. It is teed up for you. If Grizzlies fans want to see the big three of LeBron, Kyrie, and Kevin Love, they will have to get on a plane to do it. They will not even be on the bench tonight. Cavs' Ty Lu said they did not travel to Memphis. Now, I do want to point out, this is the back-to-back of a home-and-home with Memphis. And Memphis did rest Mark Gasol last night in Cleveland. So this is a little bit turnabout is fair play. Here is what LeBron had to say about it when he was questioned. My coach wanted to rest us. I'm not going to buck at my coach. You know, and that's what he want. And uh, that's what we're going to do. I've been in this league 14 years. I shouldn't have to explain me sitting out games or not playing games. I've played in every arena, including uh, Seattle that's no longer here, uh, including some other places. So, uh, you know, it's not like it's my first year. 
I think we ran that just because of the hat. By the he's, way. he's played 14 years. The other guys haven't put in 10 years yet. I don't understand that. This, this is my own problem. Now, LeBron, he's off the hook. Yes, he's been in the finals, what, six, seven straight years. So he's off the hook. I don't mind him. But the other two guys, look, when, when Memphis Grizzlies are marketing their tickets, trying to get their season ticket holders and if people to buy tickets, you best believe the defending champs is one of those games that everybody wants to see. LeBron James, Kevin Love, and Kyrie Irving. So for them to be in the Eastern Conference, Memphis Grizzly being in the West, they only come there once a year. So it's the fans out there that is looking forward to seeing these guys play, and they're not going to play. Precedent's been set, though. It's not going to change. Adam well, Silver's been asked about this. It might change well, because we why? reported Well, we reported a week or two ago that the, the league is going to move the season opener up starting next season. It's going to move up a week to 10 days. That's going to create a little extra wiggle room in the schedule, but there's still going to be patches where there are home and homes or tough travel. And Adam Silver has said, I don't feel comfortable telling teams how you manage rest. In a perfect world, all the rest would be in home games and guys would never rest in road games. But if the, the league's not going to tell coaches they have to do that. So I, I we're, we're still going to see this on occasion. On the flip side of that, hell, if I was had a coach like that resting me throughout the year, I'd probably yeah, still be still playing, playing, guys. Playing, you got to pop too late. Would you wear that hat? It was okay on LeBron. He could get away with it. He can get away with it. You that good? I don't know. Uh, who's going to tell us could get away with that hat? I'm just saying.